morning. Uh, today our scripture reading comes from uh, the prophet Daniel. We had Isaiah in Sunday school this morning. We'll go with Daniel now. If you think uh, Isaiah is hard to understand, read Daniel. Okay. And we read verses 1 and 4 and 10. And this is God speaking, of course, to Daniel. And Daniel's writing it as God speaks it. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. But thou, O Daniel, verse 4, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And verse 10, and many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Thank you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord, again, we're thankful for your word this morning. And as we've read these verses, we ask, Lord, that you'd open our hearts and our minds to them and to this message, Lord, that we might gain what you have for us in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I preached on this message in October, or one of these verses at least in October of uh, 2015, and I'm sure you all remember that. Um, <laughs> It, unless you made a note in your Bible, you probably won't remember that far back. Uh, but the message uh, that I preached at that time was the time of the end. And Daniel uses those words for that much. Uh, and Daniel reveals a lot of things that are sort of mysterious when you think about what's coming in the future. Uh, it's a lot like understanding revelation in the last days. Uh, but Daniel looks ahead and what he sees is a time of trouble. It's referred to as Jacob's trouble or Israel's trouble. It's referred to also in Revelation as the last half or the great tribulation. So this is what Daniel is being shown by God. And it's going to be a time for deliverance of the nation of Israel. His people, Daniel's people, would really be blessed by what's going to happen there, even though it's going to be the most terrible time that's ever taken place on the face of the earth since the earth existed. It's the same thing that Jesus said about the future. Now let me tell you what the words of Jesus were. For there shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So both Daniel and Jesus and by the way, also Peter and Paul talked about this day that's coming. And Jesus said about the times, the last days leading up to the end of time, that there would be a great deal of deception in the world. That in other words, you wouldn't really know who to believe. There would be wars, he said, and rumors of wars. And 
there would be no unity between nations, no agreement to have uh, peace. There would take place famines, pestilence, earthquakes, persecution would be happening. People would betray one another, even in their own families. People would hate one another. There would be great wickedness on the earth. There would be a spiritual coldness among people. Jesus said, because iniquity abounds, the love of many would grow cold. There would be false prophets on the scene that would bring information that did not come from God. But there, there would be men's hearts would fail them for fear of what was coming on the earth. And when I read all of these things over again, I've read them over and over before, but when I read all of these things, it seemed to me like that the Lord was saying to me, you're getting close to that time. You're getting close to the time when people should be concerned about what is going on on this earth that we're living on and most concerned about getting right uh, with the Lord. Now, Daniel received revelations about people who had died and would be arising from the dead sometime in the future. Some to judgment, some to eternal life. And he's talking about a bodily resurrection here. We know that to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. Your soul, your spirit goes on to be with the Lord at the moment of your death. But what will the end time be like according to Daniel? Daniel said it's going to be a busy time. Okay? People are going to be busy. In fact, people are going to get so busy, they're going to forget about God. Just like Isaiah was saying this morning in our Sunday school lesson, people forgot God. And there's coming a time in the future, and it's here beginning already. Uh, for we, we find that so many people today don't even have a connection to a church. They don't have any connection at all. Their families are not connected to church. And so he says they're going to be busy, too busy for God. And I hope that this is not a commentary for our time, but I'm afraid it is. That people have gotten to the point where they don't see the relevance of having a relationship with God or a connection to the church at all. And, and today, we, we just see people. Now, I, I went down to, uh, down to the beach to do a wedding for Tyler and uh, Sarah. And to show you how busy the world is, when we got to the foot of Alligator River Bridge heading that way, there had to be at least a mile and a half of cars ahead of us that were stopped. And the bridge was open, of course. And uh, they just kept coming up behind us. And before long, there was a mile or a mile and a half of cars behind us. And all that people are, they're going somewhere. And people are going somewhere all the time. I remember when I was growing up, it was a pure delight to get to go somewhere. I mean, <laughs> we stayed out here in the woods or down the road or down at the sound, you know. 
we didn't go anywhere much. I remember with great joy the first time I ever went to Williamston. Daddy let Daddy was going to Williamston and he let me go with him. And that that was something to me. I had never been that far from home in my life. <laughs> and now people go halfway across the world. And uh, do, you, do you know how busy we are? Every eight seconds, they say a plane lands in Atlanta or one takes off. Every eight seconds. That's a lot of people moving around. People are busy in our day and time. Now, sadly, most of the people do get too busy for the Lord. But we should be busy for the Lord all the time. We should always have the God that gives us breath and provides our food, gives us a place to stay, gives us everything that we need, died for our sins and gives us a home in heaven. We ought to always have time for the Lord. Daniel says it was also a brilliant time. He talked about knowledge being increased. And he's talked about how much it would increase and at what speed it would increase. And you think about the day that we're living in now. If you don't know the answer to some question, all you got to do is Google it. If I wanted to know what a word meant, I'd ask Fleety to Google it for me. I don't run upstairs to the dictionary no more. I can get it instantly. And times have changed so much when it comes to knowledge. And now we've got, we're just getting ready to open up a swarm of artificial Intelligence. I think a lot of people's got that and had it a long time. <laughs> but artificial intelligence is something that there's no limits on. I mean, you can do anything with it. If you were in college and you wanted to cheat on your test, or if you wanted you were in college and they told you to write a paper on a certain subject, you, you don't have to write it. You can just Google it. You can get connected to artificial intelligence. And the amount of knowledge that has increased in our day and time Think about the scientific knowledge that's changed everything in our world almost. Think about the medical changes that have taken place. I remember when Dr. Workman, Barry, you know him, he told me I had cancer on my vocal cord. He said, but it ain't no problem. We'll just zap it a few times and it'll be gone. And you know what? They zapped it a few times and it's gone. That's amazing. I mean, Mary Ellen fell and her leg was, I mean, her bone was stuck out the side of her leg. And now she's walking into church. Medical knowledge is something, I'm telling you. I mean, they can operate on you. They can set up a computer and operate on you with a robotic arm. If they're going to cut on me, I want the doctor to do it. 
that's been trained. I don't want no computer expert. Sorry, Jake. But. <laughs> but think about the knowledge and how fast it's expanding all of the time. The technical knowledge. Wow. The computer age has changed things. And now you know what's going to happen. We ain't gonna, we're ain't never, never going to be able to carry around money to pay for anything anymore. You know that, don't you? You know it's coming. President of the United States says before October we will be on crypto. And when they change, what you going to do? You going to change too or you ain't going to buy nothing. I mean, this world's getting in a mess. I remember Jimmy Swaggart used to sing a song, this old world ain't never been in the awful shape it's in. And where Daniel says we're going, we're fast heading in that direction. Now, so Daniel says it's also going to be a blind time. I believe that two thirds of the population of the United States don't have a clue what's happening. They don't have a clue. They don't understand anything. And that's what Daniel pointed out. None of the wicked are going to understand any of this that's going on. They think it's business as usual. They don't know that the Bible says that in the last days, you're not going to be able to buy and sell unless you have the mark. Won't that be a time? None of the wicked, he says, will understand that, but the wise will understand what's going on. Why? Because of this. Wise people try to find out what God thinks and what God knows is going to happen in the future. He says the wicked continue to do wickedly. They go about their lives and they don't think anything's going on. But we're heading for the end time. Compare that, that he says, to what the Apostle Paul says about the last days. He said, this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Do you know what perilous means? Dangerous. Dangerous times are coming ahead. But see, folks, dangerous times are already here. I mean, when you have people in the world today that are so disturbed in their head that they pick up a gun and start shooting people for no reason at all, that's dangerous times. When people don't know where they go or whether or not they're going to be safe. That's dangerous times. And Paul said there's going to be dangerous times coming. He said, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. They love their own selves more than they love anybody. 
more than they love their family, though they may pretend to love their family, they really love themselves more than anyone. He said people will begin to be covetous. That they'll covet things that they ought not covet. They want it if somebody else has it, and they want it right now. And people, some people, most people, in fact, are probably in debt because they covet things so much. He said the world be feel, filled with people who are boasters, bragging, proud, blaspheming, blaspheming God, disobedient to their parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection. I could go there, yeah. Truth breakers. In other words, liars, false accusers, people that are fierce and despisers of those that are good. He said there be traitors, people that are high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. All these, he said, have a form of godliness but they deny the power of God. And Paul said, stay away from them people. Don't get too close to that kind of person. But he's named about every kind of person there is in the world, isn't he? He said, then he said, after he said all that, they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth, what truth is. Now, you see all the knowledge that we have. The people mostly that are responsible for that kind of knowledge, have no knowledge of God. There are some that do it, but most don't. I'm glad that there are some Christian doctors. I really am. And I'm glad that there's some Christian lawyers and that there are some Christian teachers. But the majority don't know the truth. And if you don't know something, you can't teach it to anybody else. The wise will understand what happens in the time of the end that Daniel talks about. They'll understand. In fact, the promise that God has made to those who have received Christ is that they won't even be here when the great tribulation takes place. That the Lord will take us out of this world before that happens. A lot of stuff is going to happen on the earth leading up to that that we will have to experience but when the tribulation starts that is the time of trouble that Daniel talks about Jacob's trouble the great tribulation we won't be here we'll be gone and I'm thankful today that the Lord has made a way for me even though I'm not as wise as I ought to be, I do understand some things. The Lord has made a way for me 
And it's him that made the way, not me. And I'm thankful for that. It's either the blessings of knowing that God has provided a Savior for us or his spiritual blindness that comes in the end. The time that Daniel calls the end time is coming. And in all that's going on in our world, don't lose sight of that. Remember, the Lord is still in control of everything that's going on. He can stop it any time he wants to. In fact, the Bible tells us that he's going to stop it. He just ain't going to tell you when. So put your trust in the Lord and not in this world that we're living in. Let's pray. Father, again, we're thankful for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that we have from your scriptures, which is the knowledge of truth. And we pray, Father, that everyone who is in our congregation this morning is saved and knows Christ as Savior. If not, Lord, touch that heart and bring them to you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.